What's up y'all nappy foo all up on your screen and today is another that nap life video. I am going to give y'all what I feel are the do's and don'ts on wash day in order to reach that long thick healthy natural hair that you oh so desire. There's just some things you need to do on wash day and some things you don't need to do. Okay so if you want to know what my list is keep watching nappy foo checking in. Let go. So let me get this out the way real quick because I want to get some of y'all in the beginning, okay? If you find yourself watching at least 30 to a minute of this video, I think we can go ahead and say you should subscribe. That's all I'm saying. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be a part of Nappy Food Crew and you get notified next time I'm all up on your screen, okay? Stop playing. Subscribe. Thank you. How many of us want hair that just flows as thick? wonderful twist out looking hair coils popping in your face kind of hair can have a lot of height in your hair a lot of volume thick long ponytail people gotta ask you is that real poofy puffy cotton soft type of hair we want that right well how's your health care regimen is it healthy do you do you balance moisture and protein a healthy hair care regimen to me y'all it starts with a strong wash day yep if you've ever emailed me message me ask me how to get longer hair and all that kind of stuff i always re re i always respond back saying what's your wash day looking like because it is on wash day that we receive the most nutrients moisture protein and all things good for our hair it's wash day that all of that takes place so if your wash day is not strong then what is the likelihood that everything else is going to be strong so here we go y'all this is what i feel are the do's and don'ts of wash day and then a small little subtext i did say this is in my opinion okay you can agree not agree it's fine pre poo pre poo pre 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 poo i said that pre hey hey in that poo okay let me stop i'm so sorry i don't know where that came from i do feel pre poo starts it off this is what you want on wash day you want something that's going to protect that cuticle something that will help you prevent Hygro fatigue. That is what pre poon is all about. I have several videos on this that talks about this in detail, um, the science behind it, and everything else. I do feel pre poon is something that is that should be a part of a healthy hair care regimen. Okay, you want to work in sections when you pre poo, or even when you doing your wash day period. Okay, y'all work in sections. Now, if your hair is not long enough for sections, then of course you don't have to worry about it until your hair gets to that length. When it comes to pre pooing you do want to use a penetrating oil, okay? An oil that will go and hit the cortex. An oil that will say, what's good cortex? I'm here to protect my people. You feel me? My peoples. You feel me? That's what oils do. You know what I'm saying? That's what oils like coconut oil does. What doesn't do that is conditioners, okay? Hello? Madame? Sir? Hello? Conditioner is not a pre poo it's not okay and i have a video on this as well so please take the time to check it out pre poo using a conditioner is not what you need to be calling that maybe it's a pre-treatment pre-moisture treatment if you want to you know you moisturize your hair before you shampoo why i don't know but people like to do it but it's not pre pooing okay if you're not using the oil you're not pre pooing and because pre pooing takes best when it's left overnight Use the plastic bag, y'all, okay? Don't be mad. Don't don't judge me how I just rigged that up right there. But use the plastic bag. Keep that oil from going to your pillow, okay? Some points that I want to make about pre poon is that you do want to include heat. So if you want to use a heated dryer before you sleep, do so. If you want to use a bonnet dryer before you sleep, do so. Or make it easy on yourself. Throw a plastic bag on your head and go to bed. And let your body generate the heat. That will start it off for you, y'all. Doing pre pooing overnight is most beneficial because it was, you, you are allowing the oil to sit in your hair for a long period of time. Anything less than overnight, I feel like it's more on the hot oil side. You know, I'm doing the hot oil treatment. And hey, that's better than doing nothing, okay, y'all? So some points I want to make about pre pooing is use heat, whether it's with a bonnet dryer, a heating cap, or your own body heat from using a plastic bag. And I want to encourage you to pre poo overnight. Now let's talk about that scalp, y'all. Yes, cleansing. This is where 
your scalp is the shine, the shine, shine. Okay, the chama, the big mommy. This is where the scalp takes place. Okay, how well you take care of your scalp determines how hair, how clean your hair is. Your scalp's clean, your hair's clean. You feel me? So when it comes to cleansing, use an actual cleanser. Like let it be an actual cleanser. And one time somebody told me to use deep conditioner to cleanse. And I was like, girl, you ain't clean out a dang thing. Okay. Stop lying to yourself. I'm just saying. But anyway, use an actual cleanser, something that will definitely get the dirt and debris and the buildup from your scalp. Shampoo is the best cleanser hands down. Shampoo, black soap, what have you, best cleansers. Clay washes does not clarify does not clarify neither does co-wash and those both cleanse at the same level all right acv does not clean your scalp i had to emphasize that because some of y'all will argue me down it does not i'm sorry stop crying it's okay you will leave it is an antibacterial it's an antifungal so it is treating your scalp in a good way but it's not cleansing it's not cleansing it's not cleansing not like a co-wash not like a shampoo it's not a cleansing re replacer nothing okay it's not a cleanser i'm gonna do a video but in the meantime check out green beauty she has a whole series about it okay moving on hope i didn't hurt nobody's feelings just want y'all to get the truth on the streets you feel me now let's talk about conditioning y'all this is where your hair strand shines okay conditioning deep conditioning better yet is where the moisture sets off this is the ready set go okay There's some people who don't believe in deep conditioning. There's some that only use rinse out conditioners and they are good to go. If you notice you tried that regimen and your hair is dry, Sahara, Las Vegas, Las Vegas desert type of level, you need not to follow their regimen, okay? Let them keep that ish, okay? As for you, I am forever and always going to be team deep, oh yes, that deep conditioner, okay? Love my deep conditioner, as you can see by the face I made on the screen. I love deep conditioning because I know and I truly believe this is why moisture for me, I'm not saying it's not an issue, but it has become a little bit easier for me to maintain because I don't play with that deep conditioner, okay? I use my heat like I'm supposed to, like I'm supposed to, like I'm supposed to, and we get things popping. If moisture is your issue, you can never maintain moisture for, for to save your life. What's your deep conditioner looking like? What is your cleanser looking like? Because those two, those two go hand in hand. Some conditioning points I want to make, use heat. Whether it's your bonnet dryer or your heating cap, don't leave it overnight. Please stop doing that and definitely don't skip it. Now we're gonna get into all everything you do after washing your hair, post-wash, right? That's the LOC, the detangling, or for some of y'all might be detangling, the drying your hair. When I'm straight out the shower, y'all, I throw in some oil on my head. I do. It go ahead and jump starts that LOC we're trying to get, we're trying to, you know, get into, right? And I also have this mindset that, hey, I'm gonna use a t-shirt or I might use a turby to dry my hair. It's not silk, it's not satin, so let me just throw this oil as a little protective something something from my hair and you know this material that could snag on my hair so yeah I definitely feel like you might want to think about that and possibly go ahead and do this too you do want to air dry on wash day y'all I don't think you should come straight out the shower into blow drying if you are a blow drying natural okay for some of us blow drying actually dries our hair out more so keep that in mind you do want to have a strong LOC regimen don't miss this stuff you don't want to not lock in a little the, the moisture you got that day use a butter as I do use the oil whatever be your situation it definitely helps to go ahead and jump start that moisture you're trying to lock in for the remainder of the week I do feel like when it comes to styling, do it on stretch hair. Let your hair get to at least 90, at least 80% dry. Put in some type of stretch style. Like me, I like to do two pigtails and maybe some bantu knot outs, what have you. And let it finish drying and stretch on stretched hair. You can do African threading method, the banding method. Choose what works for you. Let your hair completely dry in that state. And when it's dry, go ahead and get to styling. This is what helps to prevent single strand knots and all the other knots we do not want. Never let your hair just dry freely. You just giving an invitation to the knots to come and hang out with you. We ain't got time for that, okay? Some post wash tips, air dry your hair. If you're gonna blow dry, let your hair get to at least 85% dry before you blow dry. LOC on damp hair, y'all, because you wanna lock in that moisture. You can't lock in dryness, right? You wanna lock in moisture. Keep your hair stretched. Stretch hair means less tangles, okay, y'all? And choose 
friendly hairstyles, I want to say low maintenance to protective styling is the best way to go. One thing I didn't talk about is detangling because that's really your preference. You can detangle before a wash day, during wash day, after wash day. Whatever you do, do it correctly, correctly as in safe. And I do want to go ahead and encourage you to use your fingers. If you are going to use a tool, use a wide tooth comb, of course, right? Okay. If you're going to use a dimming brush, I will say use that after you have finger detangled. If you're going to use a comb, use it after you have finger detangled, okay? We want to prevent that tool from ripping through your hair. All right, so I gave you all some of my do's and don'ts. And now let's get into today's Snapchat question. What are yours? What are your do's and don'ts you have for wash day? Go ahead and list them below. And remember, your answers does help another natural out. Okay, thanks y'all. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please go ahead and help your girl out by hitting that subscribe button. And make sure you hit the bell right next to it so you can be notified the next time that I am all up on your screen. Also, if you're bored during the week, come on and hang out with me on Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, all of that. All, all, all of that. And I will catch you on the next one. Until then, remember, in order for you to accomplish healthy, long, kinky, coily hair, you must always consistently do healthy things. Deuces. <laughs> if I told you you were, if I told you you were, if I told you you were beautiful, beautiful. If I told you you were beautiful, beautiful. If I told you you were beautiful, beautiful. If I told you you were, if I told you you were, if I told you.